Heidi Ho Neighbors. Um, I haven't posted in a few days because what I've been doing has been probably pretty boring and I spend a lot of time going like this. Thinking. Thinking about what to do next. Well, what is that? Well, I've been going through the um, the older shots, added a couple new shots like these actually. Um, you know, color correction, but what requires a lot of, you know, pause and think is um, you know, are we telling the story as well as we can? Can this animation be improved a little bit? This sort of stuff. Um, so I could do what I'm expecting I will do today, which is break the video. I mean, basically create pieces of a video and paste them all together to make the video that you're looking at right now. It's going to be done in pieces. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of color correction, for example, done on this shot. Uh, color correction post effects. Uh, like I use the body light plugin in Open Tunes to actually create kind of the opposite of what you'd expect. These guys, if you see right here and right here, these guys are using the body light effect to essentially give them a rim light. Well, you can use it in reverse, which is what I did. As I, it's very subtle, but it makes the back edge of her hair a little darker so that you can tell that the light is shining you know, at her and down. If you turn the effect off, this shadow under her eyes would basically disappear. It's still there slightly in the original art, but... Um, so that's what I'm doing, and, and so there's a few things I want to talk about. And the first thing is subtitles. Uh, we, we don't have a Japanese soundtrack. I've toyed around with the idea of adding um, basically placeholder uh, dialogue clips that are taken from other anime, just so we have something that sort of sounds like an anime. And I may do that. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I probably will. And as I'm working through the editing process here, I, I suspect I'll probably do that in Blender and not knock myself out trying to deal with dialogue uh, audio tracks in open tunes you can do it and it actually works pretty well just drag a wave file into open tunes and see what happens um, you know it's it's perfectly fine but as an editor y y this is more flexible you know, using blender so anyway I'm doing the subtitles and good news bad news the good news is uh, I think that the titling strip which you get to with uh, shift a effect strip text it really works pretty darn well I, I like the fact that we can uh, if, if you see here you can set the um, let me let me select this make sure I've got the right one selected for example you can create an offset by default it's flushed all the way to the bottom of the screen and when I compare it to other you know real-world anime uh, what I find is that it really needs to be positioned about here, about 0 0.10. Because of that, unfortunately, while I did try to use a Blender add-on that can uh, ostensibly import a text file and then create a bunch of um, a bunch of subtitles, uh, that plugin was basically designed for creating karaoke tracks, and it's very cool and very capable. But the one thing you can't do, you know, it's like you generate, you know, 200 titles, right? 200 of these little title strips. The one thing you can't do is take them all as a group and change this Y offset. So it's like, ah, does everything I need except the one thing I definitely need. So that was a little disappointing. But the, the solution I've come up with, since you're adding subtitles, you know, kind of in a linear way as the show progresses, it's not that big of a deal. Once I get one text... Um, object that is basically looking the way I like then I just hit shift D to make an exact duplicate of it and then change the text so no big deal um, I'm gonna see something here yeah okay so let's erase that strip okay so it looks like that's how we're gonna do subtitles um, there's, you know, in this shot, there's some secondary animation because it became obvious that it was important that it 
look like he's standing up because when we went from this shot to this shot, he's no longer squatting down like like he was in this shot. Um, see right there, he's squatted down. He's got the vase. You know, when he gets poked, you could argue, you know, does he look like he's squatting or standing? I don't think it matters much there, but... Um, so we needed to get him up somehow, so I added some secondary animation with the plastic tool. So everything you see there is just one single drawing modified by the plastic tool, which, again, as I've shown in other videos, it's pretty cool that you can do that. I also completely modified this shot so that because previously Akari was bigger, closer, and you couldn't see the sword because it was behind the guy. And we kind of realized that, Honestly, for the staging here to make sense, it's probably important that she have a little bit of distance between herself and these guys. And I think the overall staging of that shot looked looked better. So now the next shot that I'm going to work on is going to be a close-up. It's actually going to be this shot, now modified, um, uh, to probably deal with her attitude a little bit the look in her eyes and then there's going to be some some lip sync this one actually has some lip sync uh what happens is you hear her voice and then you catch just the last little syllable you know that she speaks so i'm probably going to have to do some more mouth shapes and so that is kind of what carries us into the next the next step okay so that's that um and I'm actually going to make a little, uh, I'm going to doing something right now. I'm going to go run notepad. I'm actually going to make a note of the stuff I'm talking about here. So I don't forget when I do the comments. Okay, so the next thing would be uh, sub X sheets. It's been a little bit of a mixed bag, I must say. Uh, if you... What I had arrived at some time ago was to take what is essentially like this, like an animatic. It's essentially an animated storyboard where you're just putting in your keyframes. And I always say, let's build out. Build out from the, the simplest representation of the story, almost like a comic book with a little bit of motion. And then, and then, and then just add in-betweens and add other components to the scene as you go, as needed. Okay, and that's kind of useful because... The actual animatic is here. It's it's always there to refer to to sort of guide our process as we go forward. Um, and in this case, it also includes the dialogue, so I don't forget what the words were supposed to be. Yes, it's written down, but you know why go fish for it if you can have it right here? Okay. So I waffled between uh, either using sub X sheets versus in a recent video, I said, hey, here's what I'm doing. And I'm taking these sub X sheets and actually deleting everything and then saving everything into its own individual scene. My conclusion at this point is that that's kind of um, more work than it's worth. And the reason it's more work than it's worth is that OpenTunes does a really good job of dealing with sub X sheets. In other words, these two frames right here, actually this one's got some animation, so we'll use this as an example. If I go down into this sub X sheet, the actual action in the sub X sheet is, is this. So in a sense, here I have my bird's eye view of my whole s sequence, which could be several minutes long. And just by going into the sub X sheets, I can add backgrounds, details, effects, vignettes, shadows, whatever. I think that's a better way to work. There's just one gotcha, okay? And I'm going to make a note of this as well. The gotcha is rendering slash uh, output title. Here's why. If I go in here, I can go Control-O, and I can change the name of the... Uh, file that's going to be generated when you render. Now if you change it here, as near as I can tell, it's a little bit strange. If I change the frame start and end range and then close this and just hit Alt R, <clears throat> it'll go ahead and render an MP4 based on the name of the scene file, which in this case would be pre-fight dialogue. If I go ahead and render it from here, then whatever name I give here will be the name of the output file, but I can't hit Alt-R, I have to hit Render. 
So in other words, right now I could actually, even though this dialog is open, I can hit Alt-R and it'll go ahead and start rendering. And it rendered one frame. So I presume that right now all we have is a actually a one frame start and end situation. Oh, we do right here from 72 to 72. Okay. But you'll notice if you look really, really closely, pre-fight dialog is the name of the file. Whereas if I render it here, it's going to be called Ninja, Ninja One Grunts, which is the name I have. So here's the good and the bad about that. Since I'm using sub... Okay, if, if this was broken into individual scenes, you just hit Alt-R and the f resulting file name would be correct because it'd be the name of the scene. <clears throat> well, I don't want to have to break everything up into individual scenes. It really is less cumbersome to just deal with uh, sub-X sheets. And again, I can't overstate the value of having this bird's-eye view of the whole sequence. It's really, really, really important. Okay, so the bad news I have for all you people out there, is that this seems to be funky. See, what I thought two days ago was, hey, this is cool. What I'll do is, when I'm in this sub-X sheet, I'll call this Ninja One Grunts. I'll set the proper frame range, which in this case would be 25 to 72. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll, let me check one thing here. Okay, yeah. Let me add this as a preset. And we'll call this what we want the file name to be, which is going to be 0022 Ninja One Grunts. Okay? So now I've saved that as a preset, which is cool because that means that depending on which sub X sheet I'm inside of, I can select a different output parameter. So now Ninja One Grunts is being generated and in fact it is doing 48 frames which I think the math is correct so I'm going to cancel that. But here's the problem I discovered is it actually turns out that if I jump back to this, now watch it'll do it right now. Yeah, there's your problem. It turns out that these render presets do nothing. They, when you switch between them, nothing happens. <laughs> nothing updates. I thought what was going to happen was that all every parameter in this dialog was going to be updated with the information from that preset. Now, is it possible? Let me, let me try something here. See, there's no direct way to save a preset once it's been created. But I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. And I'm just going to change this output to broadcast HD. So let's go 1280 by 720. Okay. It kept the aspect ratio, so it filled in 720 for me. Okay, so now, because I changed something, the preset disappeared. And I'm actually going to save it under the same name, ASDF. And let's overwrite it. Now, let's see what happens when we switch between these. The one I just created. Okay. And then ASDF. So what we see is, is unfortunate. It's really kind of unfortunate which is that your output presets only change the camera settings, which is basically, it's not useless, but it's certainly not the helpful um, option I thought it would be because I really thought the preset would include the file settings. So that's a little disappointing, but, you know, whoop de doo That means that when I want to render, oh, poor me, I have to specify uh, not only the frame range. Actually, let me check this again. Let me let me do this. Let me change this from 1 to 60 just for kicks and giggles. All right. So I've changed that, but I didn't change anything here. So that's kind of interesting. So it that would tell me that probably the frame start and end are not included in the preset. Let's find out. Okay. So now I'm going to go to here. And again, I I am correct. It changed the camera settings back to what they are supposed to be but it did not change the frame range. So if I was going to make a suggestion to the OpenTunes developers, it would certainly be, hey, let's, let's make the output settings uh, at least have the option to include the file settings in a render preset. That would be cool because then for one scene with many sub-X sheets, I could actually have just a whole list of um, render presets based on whichever sub-X sheet I'm dealing with. As it is right now, it still works, 
but I have to specifically change the file name and frame range when it's time to render. Not a huge deal. I mean, it takes less than 30 seconds, so that's that. Okay, um, so I'm going to make a note here that that is about the output settings preset list only does camera setting. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about something that I really wasn't sure if I was even going to bother to talk about, but I will, okay, which is Blender 2.8. Okay, yesterday I created a video, which I didn't post, using Blender 2.8 because, and I don't even know what it was that led me down this road, but something had tweaked me to uh, feel that the timing might be good to give Blender 2.8 another try. Now, I want to state something emphatically. There's only a few components to the Blender 2.8 grease pencil that would really recommend it for 2D animation over OpenTunes. Okay? Uh, so let me kind of show a little bit um, what I'm talking about. Okay, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to cover it in this video fairly briefly, but basically let's just say what's good and what's bad. What's good is number one is the 2D animation preset. It's great because it sets everything up uh, as far as your screen real estate very, very nicely for 2D animation. That's a good thing. Another good thing is the, <clears throat> the interactivity of the brushes. The ability to draw in Blender 2.8 is really, really nice. Now, is it appreciably better than 2.79? My sense is that it's a tiny bit better. It's not like hugely better, but but uh, it, it does seem to be a little bit more responsive. And, you know, as I'm drawing this character, it just, it, it feels good. I mean, if you want a, a drawing program to fiddle around with, Blender 2.8 is not a bad choice, okay? So one of the reasons one might embrace Blender Grease Pencil for 2D animation would be that everything's deformable, okay? So in other words, if, um, let me see, I'm going to hit Tab and go into Edit Mode so I can shrink this down a little bit, all right, and maybe not quite that much, okay. So now, one of the cool things about the Blender Grease Pencil is that I can, for example, um, and let's see, can I, yeah, uh, that uses, that does a box select, which isn't really quite what I wanted. So I'm in edit mode, and when I hit control, okay, so this is one of the bad things. One of the bad things is that there are a number of things that you might be used to if you've done Grease Pencil work or animation in Blender 2.79 that have changed. I'm not always sure that I'm on board with the changes and the reasons for them, but I guess the important takeaway is there are definitely changes that you need to be aware of. So I'm going to do, yeah, if I do a box select. So unfortunately, I well, my expectation was that hitting control oops, hitting control left mouse would do a lasso select or maybe control right mouse and it doesn't. So I actually don't know how to do a lasso select. I'm sure it's simple, but at this point I don't know how to do it and I'm not going to try to figure it out right here and now. Okay, but in Blender 2.79, if I want to now open this guy's jaw and enjoy the fact that this is a completely deformable um, model, if you will, I would click here and by the way, I'm going to go into my overlays. Um, where is my... Oh, I know what the problem is. I need to go into front view. Okay. So, this is a little confusing. You have to specifically tell Blender to show the 3D cursor. The default is for it to not be there. Okay, I think that's a poor design choice. For the simple reason that if you've been using Blender in the past, you expect the 3D cursor to be in the scene. And frankly, it's kind of important, okay, for what I'm doing right now. I want to rotate on this guy's, I want to rotate this guy's jaw on the cursor. So what I'm going to do is hit the period key and 
Um, okay. This would be... Okay, I didn't expect the pie menu to pop up. And that's fine. I mean, it's... Frankly, one of the cool things about Blender 2.8 is the pie menu. Okay, so now I can do this, right? And I can hit the A key to... Actually, I have to hit Alt-A in Blender 2.8. Um, and now I can... Okay, so now let's get into another thing that is <coughs> new and I think is good. Okay. Now I want to obviously fix up this drawing. Okay, so I got the benefit of... Uh, and I, by the way, it looks to me like there might be an extra key. Nope, there's not an extra keyframe. Okay, so now I want to fix up that action. This guy's yelling, right? Okay. Um, so what happens is if you're if you're in grease pencil drawing mode and you hit the tab key, you go into edit mode, and then if you hit tab again, it does not take you back into drawing mode. It takes you to object mode. Now that's kind of understandable because the Blender Grease Pencil data blocks are, in fact, a, a standard Blender object. So I, I have no problem with that. Um, in here, by the way, in my overlays, I believe it would be outline selected. Turn that off. If you're in the front view, one thing that's good here in Blender 2.8 is you can still hit the 9 key to just flip your drawing, which is cool. If you don't want to see the grid, you can just turn off overlays completely. Uh, there appears to be a bug that if you t if you scale or change the grid like I'm doing here, you can see it updates in real time, but if you turn it off, nothing happens. It doesn't turn off. As far as I can tell, the only way I can get rid of the grid is to uh, actually turn off overlays completely. So right now what I'm doing is, here in real time, I'm just clicking off everything to see if... Yeah, nothing seems to get rid of the grid except turning overlays off completely. So generally, if I'm in front view, I would probably want to leave it on anyway. So if I don't want to see the grid, go ahead and hop over to the camera and get get the perspective of what's actually going on with the staging of my scene. Okay, so I mentioned that hitting tab twice takes you back to object mode, not drawing mode. Well, I was put off by that at first, but then I realized that if you hit control tab, you get you get the pie menu, okay? Okay, fine. No problem. Another thing that's good in Blender 2.8 is you can hit shift space and you sort of get a a sub menu of options. So the pie menu with control tab working together with shift space bar, I think is pretty cool. I mean, it's it's a smart design decision that lets you go in and get to what you're looking for, you know, pretty efficiently. Okay. So now, and by the way, any of the any of the grease pencil tools, the parameters are here across the top. Okay? So I'm going to switch this to eraser hard because I just, I like that eraser better. All right? And then I can go in here. And then by hitting uh, control tab, I'm back to drawing. And okay, that's interesting. I'm in draw mode, but okay, I have to go, I have to, this, you know, essentially erasing is a sub option of drawing. And terms of what the how blender looks at it so if I want to fix that I've got to use shift spacebar okay so why you know again the question is why would you use blender for animation not you know open tunes or something else well one reason is also sculpting um, let me see here okay these are all the draw tools so I'm gonna go control tab I'm gonna go into sculpt mode okay and I okay push is fine let's use push Okay, so we could, for example, introduce, and I'm going to actually hit the F key. T F key lets you make your brush bigger or smaller. Okay, so in this case, the ability to sculpt the character like this is kind of cool. Okay, so I like that. That was present in 2.79. Um where things do begin to fall apart a bit for me is in the fill operation which is unfortunate because if again I'm always looking at parity between software you know what is blender giving me now that open tunes doesn't give me when you look at open tunes and you look at everything I talked about earlier about the ability to nest sub x sheets 
the things you can do with the plastic tool, which is essentially the same as being able to deform things in Blender or sculpt them, it, it's, it's a hard sell to buy into the idea that what Blender's giving me is palpably better than what I've already got in OpenTunes. And I wouldn't make the switch unless it was definitely better. Okay, so now I put in more keys than I wanted. Um, I'll just hit the old delete. Anyway, so what I'm getting at is that one of the killer features, if you will, of Blender 2.8 is the fill option. The thing that's glaringly absent in 2.79 is the ability to fill shapes with a flood fill operation. Um, what you're going to find is every animation software tends to fall apart at the step of um, ink and paint. There are a lot of programs that make it fun and easy to do pencil tests, and I would say that Blender's one of them. Whether you're using 2.79 or 2.8, doesn't matter. I still do pencil tests and animatics in Blender, and it's super cool to be able to work in the 3D space. And for example, I could bring a plane into this shot and drag and drop an image on top of it and have a background. And if I need to do a 3D camera move or something, um, whether I'm using grease pencil assets or whether I'm using an image sequence from any other program, doesn't matter. But the point is Blender gives you a wonderful environment in which to do those 3D operations, which do come up once in a while. In fact, in this sequence, the original um, sequence that's not in this particular um, scene, but the original sequence where the guy caught the vase, that vase was all done in Blender. It was done in 3D, so it looked like it was going, you know, and then he catches it before it falls and crashes and wakes her up. Of course, it woke her up anyway. But getting back to fill operations, I guess there are two things I would want to discuss. One is the materials editor because it's a little different because it used to be the, the grease pencil layers and colors were sort of their own thing. And now it's really been kind of unified with the blender um, materials overall. So that's a good thing because it kind of means that the overall paradigm for how you work is consistent between 3D and 2D between 3D models, geometry, and the grease pencil. But if you're used to grease pencil 2.79, it might throw you because when you need to create a new material, um, let's, let's just do a simple case here for demonstration purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control tab and go back into draw mode and I'm just going to draw a simple shape. Okay. And then what I want to do is fill that shape. Now, generally speaking, f doing your fills on a different layer, which they suggest through the, you know, the template is set up for that, it's probably a good idea. Let's look at it both ways. Let's try it both ways. Okay. Now, we can't fill it with this red color because you can see that it looks like a little outline here. Well, that's because it's the, f the fill color is not red. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag the red here so it's the same color but then I'm going to turn the alpha up and actually I'm going to do the opposite on the line so what this means is that this color is not going to generate a line it's only going to generate the color inside the line okay let's just see what happens okay now this is pretty good I must say um, better than the results I've been getting uh, generally Okay, in that the fill operation did a really nice job of filling in the shape. Okay, I, this is dramatically better actually than the results I've generally been getting with the fill tool. Let's go ahead and hit control Z and let's fill into the other level or layer and see what happens. Okay, same thing. Basically, it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. All right, so that's a good thing now let's just say for the sake of discussion that I want to go ahead and create a um, oh I'm doing a fill sorry about that folks okay so let's just say I'm creating this range so that I can add a, a shadow color now what I really should do is create that line with the shadow color so let's do that 
Okay, so what I want to do, and this is where I was getting into the material editor, how it's a little different. What I need to do is I need to duplicate the red and then create another version of it that's a little darker. That's one way to do shadows. Now, there's another way to do shadows in Blender Grease Pencil 2.8 that is very cool because it's kind of like in Krita when you use Inherit Alpha, or it's kind of like in Open Tunes when you use a Multiply plugin with Clip enabled. I'll show what that means here in just a sec. But here what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to duplicate this color. Well, if I duplicate the color, what it does is it, it, it goes ahead and creates the duplicate replacing the one that I had. You want to think of the materials as being placeholders. So this list is pointing to materials. Okay. So once I've created the duplicate, I'm switching this back to red because I didn't really want to change that. Uh, in fact, let's check one thing here. What if, what if I have the same color index but change the color? Okay, so you can see what's happening. So as far as the grease pencil is concerned, slot number two is what was used to fill this. So it's the slot that dictates the fill color, not the material itself. Okay, so that red color was not baked into this. It's slot number two that was baked into it. Well, that's fine. So if I want to have the red color available, then I need to do something a little different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to the red, which, because it parallels to the slot, it, it, it switched colors. So what I want to do is hit the plus key so that a new slot is created. And then it's the slot that I want to fill with this alternative color. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is drag this to here, and then I'm just going to make it a little darker. Okay? So now what I can do is in draw mode, just draw this shape. Okay, that's actually not what I intended to do. I intended to draw it as a line, but that's okay. So this is one of the things about Blender 2.8 that's cool. If you don't want to fight with flood fills, you can do it this way because it shows you what your the fill shape as you draw it. You can actually do your coloring this way. And in some of the demos that I've seen uh, Daniel Lara do that are like speed draw type things, it looks to me like he's doing a lot of coloring that way as opposed to um, necessarily counting on the flood fill tool to do a great job. The upshot about that is that when I've used the flood fill tool to fill a complex shape, let's let me just save this so I can show you. Uh, we'll save this as um, and I'm just going to add a date to this. Okay. That way I can pull up the most recent. Okay, what I what I found, I'll just go to the end here. I was just totally dicking around. I, I did I I'm not proud of this drawing. Okay, it's okay, but it's not. Okay, but this this situation right here um really seems to come up over and over and over. So I'm gonna get rid of the lines layer so that all we have is the ink lines and the fills. And then again in the overlays, I want to turn off outline selected so I can really see what I've got. Now, this, this outline is a little hokey because I didn't have the strength at 100%, so that's why the outline, the ink, is a little transparent. That's not Blender's fault, that's my fault. For testing purposes, it really didn't matter. But what I found is the fill tool gives you results like this kind of a lot. Like, it's actually really difficult with a complex shape to get a reliable fill operation. So for me, that's a little bit of a non-starter. I tried a number of things, such as switching to, um, like the initial thickness on the fill is like 40 or something, and the leak size, I think, is zero. So conceptually, the idea that it even has a leak size is very, very cool, but there's a total trade-off. If you have a leak size, meaning that Blender is going to look for leaks and go ahead and fill the area successfully anyway, that's cool, but you're going to get a lot more of, of this kind of stuff, which means 
which which you know we're talking about what does that mean to real world workflow what it means is you're frequently going to be um using the you know you're using the leak detection capability to make your fills more successful but then when they fill you wind up with more anomalies that you have to hand paint to fix up anyway so your net gain is nothing uh basically so what takes more work to fix a lot of this sort of thing or does it take more work to go through your art and make sure that there aren't leaks okay well in open tunes the um the i'm sorry what is it control f uh i can't remember what i have as a, a hot key here uh ch -ch 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 let's use akari as an example yeah okay so it's alt f um the view fill check is not 100% amazing, but it does a pretty good job of, of telling you whether you've got properly filled shapes. The upshot is that um, with a, almost a whole day devoted to really grokking Blender 2.8 and getting through, you know, getting over the new interface and some of the new ways of doing things, basically I'm through that. Basically, well, I have to keep reminding myself of some things. I pretty much am at the point where I can do what I want to do with Blender 2.8. But the fill issue is a little bit of a non-starter for me. And the other thing is parenting. Okay, so I'm going to actually jump back into object mode and grab this empty. Okay, so I've got an empty in the scene. And what I found was... In in this case, the empty is the 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 layers are parented to the empty, and there's no there's no issue. However, I opened another scene, and when I parented to an empty, the grease pencil layers literally just disappeared. And I really tried to figure out why, and, and I couldn't. It it looked like a bug to me. Um, so let's go here, and let's just see if if we get any different result. I'm gonna hit the tab key twice so now I'm in object mode and I'm gonna add an empty to my scene okay so plain axis is what I tend to favor okay so I have an empty and now what I want to do is select the grease pencil object and I need to parent both of these levels or layers to the empty now in in blender 2.8 if you're used to 2.79 you're gonna be like where you know here's my layers here's my colors where the heck is my parenting stuff and it's kind of unfortunate but the, the only way you can get to it is you need to take the colors and drag it down. So you drag it down and you're going to relations. Okay, relations. And I've got the lines. And I select the empty. And the problem I had yesterday doesn't seem to be happening today, so that's good. Um, let's do it the other way. Let's do it by with a, a mouse click. So I'm going to grab this and click the empty. Boom. Okay, so today it seems to want to work. Yesterday... I had a a test scene like this and when I parented the grease pencil layers to the empty they they simply disappeared. So yeah, this seems to be working. So um you know, on balance I have mixed feelings. Blender 2.8 might be getting close to the point where it's kind of functionally usable. Basically all the stuff about the 2.8 grease pencil that are touted as really cool things like effects and things like that to me they're not that it's not that useful i mean the the blender for example there's a lighting effect okay and i'm not going to even try to reproduce it right now because i haven't gone that deep with the interface and i don't want to waste your time take it take my word for it that we can take this scene and we can put a light in the scene that illuminates the grease pencil objects okay so on the face of it that seems really cool however from my perspective, um, that's not that huge of a win to me because if I take any 2D animation and, for example, add a just add a, a layer over top of it in overlay mode, I can simulate light uh, just as well, and it works fine. So, so to me, it's like, yeah, that's cool, but how is it better than what I could already do for a long time? in other programs. Similarly, you know, if I have an animation that is actually timed out correctly, I could render this image sequence, drag it into Blender, map it to a plane so that it is um, 
I got to set up a couple bits of housekeeping, but basically make it so that that sequence or that video plays in real time on the timeline at 24 frames a second in the 3D workspace. Well, if you do that in Blender, then you can obviously take a light and illuminate the plane and you get the exact same effect that you can now get at natively to the grease pencil. Well, um, that you could do in Blender 2.79 and earlier. That's always been something you could do. So it's not that it's not cool and useful. It's just that the, 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 the use cases where it's actually going to matter and be something that is like, oh, I'm so glad that feature was there, I think are going to be pretty rare. That's my opinion. I may change my mind because I am going to keep trying. I'm going to keep working with Blender 2.8 and trying to trying to go a little a little, uh, a little deeper um, because I've been using Blender for 20 years. You know, I'm a, I'm a Blender fanboy. Just not so far. I haven't been a Blender fanboy of Grease Pencil 2.8. So, you know, I still do most, frankly, of my initial pencil tests and, and animatics in Blender. But what gets brought into Open Tunes is essentially this. It's it's a sequence of the keyframes, just the important stuff, and then I can go into sub X sheets and fully develop them out into shots that I can then cut into my show. So anyway I wanted to talk about Blender 2.8. Um, it's definitely got some bugginess still on the one hand, it's definitely the case that the things about the Blender pen or Grease Pencil that are really useful to me are things that were already there in 2.79 for the most part. Once we get into a situation where we're going to do some rigging, okay, so we're not just parenting to an empty or whatever, but maybe we're setting up a bone. Um, I, I should probably do a video about it sometime for too long but the idea would be to let me let me just play with this a little bit in real time so if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say rigging what I mean is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add an armature okay and then I'm gonna take this down here and then maybe I'm gonna hit extrude and uh, I guess I wanna I wanna go into edit mode so I can grab this extrude extrude okay so part of the let us say promise of blender 2.8 would be the idea that we can now parent grease pencil objects to a rig like this. So this is obviously a grossly simplified rig. But the concept would be that I can take this grease pencil um I'm going to use the fills cuz uh, you know it, how you get Blender to treat these two layers as one thing is not clear to me. Probably what you have to do is parent each of these individually to the to the armature. Okay. While I'm here, I'm going to show you one more thing just while I'm thinking about it. I'm going to add a layer and I'm going to call this shadow. And I want I want you to see this because this is something about Blender 2.8 that is definitely cool. All right. I'm going to grab the black here. And I'm going to um what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a couple steps here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this color um sorry hit escape okay and i want to i'm sorry i need to make a duplicate there we go okay so now this one actually needs to be black and then this one needs to be the new version okay and why did i do that well so that it's filled so here it's black on the inside and the outside, but we need to crank the alpha up. So now we've got a black that's only an outline. Uh, so let's go control tab and draw. So we've got a black that's only an outline and we've also got a black that is filled. Okay. So now you get it. Um, okay. So having done that, what I wanted to show you was this right here. I'm in the shadow layer and if you turn this off you can see what I drew. Watch what happens if I click this. Everything disappears. Okay, why did it disappear? Well, this is what's cool. Well, it didn't disappear. It's like I said, it's like using a multiply with clipping post-production effect in OpenTunes. 
it's like using inherit alpha in Krita. The idea is that now I can draw this right around here and draw a shadow. Sorry about that. And that shadow is going to be clipped to whatever's underneath. That's a super useful capability. And now if I want to go in here and crank the alpha down like this, I can really dial in a nice shadow effect that is clipped to my character. Okay, and if I was doing this, I would just turn the stroke off so that you get this sort of a shadow situation. And it's great because because a, a, a transparent black can be applied to any color to make it a little bit darker. So now you only need one material to do a lot of shadows. Normally in a scenario like this, I would probably have two materials, one that's like 20% opaque and one that's like 40 so that... Uh, but the thing about Blender is, and this is actually super cool, is that it's additive. If I go ahead and add another level of this where it overlaps, then I can just build it up that way. So um, definitely that right here, clamp any pixel outside the underlining layers. Now, what is the weakness of this? The weakness of it is if I construct my scene in such a way that I'm drawing a lot of stuff. Uh, in other words, I want to put a background in here. Here, let me grab this. Let me just go up this way. Um, I'm having, okay, I need to drag down with my middle mouse button. Okay, so now the, the, the weakness of this approach would be that if I, uh, let's use this red color because then you'll be able to see it. Now if I draw, let's say I'm drawing a background here. Okay, so there's the problem because a, a, a layer below um, created, it changed the overall alpha channel mask of the, the whole scene. Now, of course, the shadows are visible there as well. So it can become problematic. It sort of suggests that you're definitely going to, if you're going to use that feature, you want to break your scenes up into individual layers and sort of composite them together later. For me, that's a little clunky because for me I tend to be doing shadows and backgrounds and all that stuff right here all in a single open tunes sub X sheet and I can sort of set up the relationship between them the way I want them to that's why I do the shadows as a post-production effect so but having said that you know being able to do shadows that way is pretty cool okay so now we're back to how do we do um articulation with an armature okay if this was blender 2.79 and this drawing was not a drawing but rather was 3d geometry I would just parent it to the armature and I would have the option to let the armature uh, automatically generate vertex groups I have no idea if that will work here I suspect not but I'm gonna try so I grab my fills layer and I guess in, in the old days, what we would do is we'd hit control P, set parent to an object. Boom. Okay. Uh, you have no idea if that worked. So let me go here. It's still parented to the empty. So I'm going to take the fills and instead I'm going to parent it to the armature. Okay. And. Okay, so I'm not going to waste any more of your time. I want you to know that what, what needs to happen here in order for this to work the way you would expect is that either we need to grok the parenting function so that Blender will ask me if I want to create vertex groups automatically, or I need to do it the hard way, which is to take this and go ahead and set up vertex groups. Okay, by setting up vertex groups... I could take, uh, let's just say, here's here's the object. I'm going to go into edit mode, and uh, I'll use the box select for the moment. So, so I'm grabbing these. Uh, okay, I should mention by the way. Okay, this is actually where it becomes interesting, and I'm going to encourage you at home to try this. Let me explain what's going on here. When I did the vertex selection, Blender selected vertices 
not just in the layer that I've currently got selected, but it selected vertices in all layers that are visible. That's a good thing. Okay, think about that for a minute. What that means is that theoretically I could set up a vertex group that includes all these layers, includes the shadow, etc., etc., and hopefully they're all going to work as a single unit. Let's try it and see what happens. Okay, so what I would do is create a vertex group, and I'm going to assign the currently selected vertices to that vertex group. Okay, and by the way, I'm going to create two more groups. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, I'm going to hit the A key, Alt A, and I'm going to do another box select. And I, and I know that these selections are going to overlap somewhat. That's okay because I want to see how Blender is going to deform between them. So now I'm going to assign that. They all have a weight of one. In the old days, that meant that Blender would intelligently interpolate the weighting on vertices that were parts of both groups. I don't know if that's going to happen here. But we're going to find out. Okay, so now I'm going to hit Alt-A again in the B key so that I'm, again, I'm selecting vertices that are um, in multiple layers. Okay, I assign that. Okay, so now I'm going to deselect that group just to see if Blender created the, the groups properly. And it looks like it did. Okay, so now what it seems like we would want to do do is we would want to take group one and parent it to a bone okay and we're going to make it bone zero zero two because that would have been the last one created <clears throat> and so now the question is this is where it gets confusing and again i'm going to i'm not an expert on this so i'm going to encourage you to look at it at home it looks to me like there's two parenting concepts in play here. One would be, what is the actual parent of the layer? If I'm correct, what should happen now is if I go into object mode by hitting tab, couple, or yeah, once, I'm going to actually select this and then go control tab. Now I'm going to grab just this bone and I'm going to rotate it. And it looks like what happened is what I expected. All of the vertices from this grease pencil layer are parented to just that bone and that's exactly what I told it to do okay so honestly that's really not what I want so I'm gonna kill the parent okay so now now there is no parent so it seems to me that probably what needs to happen here is we probably need to apply a modifier to the to the layers so that we're able to break the parenting of the armature into three bones that are mapped to three uh, vertex groups. That's the way you would do it with 3D geometry. I assume that's how you would do it here. I'm going to stop here because it wouldn't do me any good to, to waste your time watching me figure out how to do that. But conceptually, that's what you want to do. So presumably, what we're looking for here is a modifier that we can place on this particular object and I assume we would probably have to copy that modifier to any other levels that we want to have uh, involved but maybe not see this is where it's a little confusing the vertex groups have already been created and the vertex groups include vertices from multiple grease pencil layers so what we really want to do is figure out how we um, assign those vertex groups to these bones that's your homework because <laughs> right now I don't know how to do that but I'll just say if it works and it works well then that's a big thumbs up for blender 2.8 because that's one of the reasons why would you want to use the, the grease pencil for 2d animation well being able to fully rig a character uh, is is a super good reason to want to do that so but there's a lot of housekeeping involved. There's a lot of setup involved. Uh, if we go over to Open Tunes, for example, and we do essentially the same thing, okay? So I go, I create a, a shape just like I did. I go Control C. Uh, we make a red color. We fill this, okay? To do the same exact thing, I'm talking about rigging here in Open Tunes. All I would do is hit the X key 
and I would I would resolve the drawing to a, a mesh and then to, to completely match what I did in Blender I would go um, build skeleton and I would I would create a root for the skeleton and then I would go click 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 okay and now when I go into animate mode as you can see it's basically doing what I had in mind and another thing that's cool about it is that if you don't like the weighting which you might not because as this is as this bone is bending this way I'm saying wait a minute I don't want it to make these vertices move well in open tunes that's easy to fix because you just come in here grab this and maybe create a couple extra utility bones over here which basically enforces some control over them so now as you can see the the range of influence is more limited so it's 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 fast it's effective and it's pretty controllable if you you know go in and add some utility bones here and there to be able to do whatever it is you want to do um, so the Blender implementation for Grease Pencil 2.8 would have to be pretty sophisticated and relatively easy to set up in order to be a compelling alternative. Now, if you're going to get into combining the Grease Pencil and the sort of stuff I'm talking about, if you're going to combine that with 3D, Blender wins big time. Can't compete with that, you know. So, you know, having said that, let me ask, let me, let me put something this way. Let me go ahead and kill Blender 2.8. And again, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to point towards pragmatism here. And I'm really talking to myself. I'm saying, you know, I'm going through my own thought process to say, what, what about this is a win versus maybe not a win? Okay. Is it worth spending a lot of time with? In Blender 2.79, to accomplish the same thing you would have to take a drawing okay you would you would map it to a plane and all I'm gonna do is just I'm actually gonna go into my uh, library of images that I'm using for the anime and I'm gonna find just some reference material and literally gonna grab essentially uh, okay something from Black Butler here so I drag this in here in Blender 2.0 seven nine okay now if I want to do the same basic thing here let's size the oh sorry are we in object mode yeah I gotta get into object mode I'm gonna size this on the X I'm gonna hit the uh, go into edit mode actually I'm not gonna go in yeah I will I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and subdivide this a bit so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna subdivide 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 okay now back to object mode and I'm going to add an armature there it is we can see that they're actually lined up together so that's cool alright and then I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm gonna extrude that by hitting the E key and now I put in three bones and all I'm gonna do is just grab this and parent it to this so control P and I'm gonna do an armature deform with automatic weights okay now if I go control tab you can see that again it's very simple if we scale this on the Y or I'm sorry not the Y the Z because from the angle we're looking at it it's the Z okay so you can go in make all kinds of tweaks and not only that but you also uh, can grab this guy and let's go into a different view here but you, you can also if you're not getting enough resolution on your mesh um, you can just go into this and add a subdivision surface modifier okay and so it just it makes it deform uh, more nicely and again you have the same situation where you could uh, you could go into this um, you know it's it, there's, there's a lot you could do okay because for example if I go into this image now and erase create an alpha channel and erase everything behind this guy then when I reload the Blender file, you know, he'll be partially transparent. And so now I've, I've actually sort of baked him into the scene. By the way, there's something going on with, I think, vertex weighting or something. So I'm not sure why I'm getting this rainbow effect going on because I'm moving very quickly. 
but but you know the point is that if if it's if it's bone deformation I'm after I have a very good solution in open tunes most of the time I've got a very good solution in blender 2.79 blender 2.8 theoretically better but I haven't followed that through to the point where I've actually fully rigged a character and um, it would have to really be both amazingly easy to set up and give me very predictable and, and you know, super, uh, <laughs> what's the word, easy. <laughs> you know, it would have to easily let me rig and move a character all around in order for that to be so compelling that I'm going to say, well, now I'm going to switch to Blender 2.8. So, but this is, this is the way my brain works. This is the process I go through. Whenever I see a feature that's like, wow, that's cool. Well, okay, but how cool is it compared to what you can already do uh, in another way? Uh, because, you know, the question is, am I going to go through the learning curve? I mean, that is the question. So with Blender 2.8, the answer right now is maybe. You know, it's it's looking like some aspects of it are pretty cool and interesting. Um still might have some bugginess uh the jury's out on the the level of bugginess that we're actually having to deal with so anyway um if you're going to do this if you're going to go down this road and try it what i recommend is you could create a new tab here like a new it, in open tunes parlance it would be like a room so you can create one that is oriented uh towards 2d animation but none of the basic housekeeping uh, with with layers and colors and brushes, none of the housekeeping set up. So if you're going to dive into it, what I recommend doing is go File, New, and then use the 2D animation template as your starting point because then you can do what I would want to do, which is just get busy and start drawing. So again, for, for storyboards, for pencil tests, um, interactivity, you know what, Blender 2.8 is is great. I would certainly use it immediately for um, storyboarding and animatics. Uh, final animation, color, ink and paint, blah, 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 blah. Probably not. Well, I, I shouldn't say probably. I know perfectly well that, that, that it's, it's not that interesting yet. Um, there's a lot of things to look at, like the quality of the brushes. Do, do I want to... Um, let me let me see if we have I'm in draw mode so where are my yeah here we go so you've got some pretty good options here's here's ink I have to say that um, responsiveness to pressure seems really good I mean it looks to me like you could definitely ink a, ink a manga with blender 2.8 if that's what you wanted to do so not bad um yeah, I mean there's a pretty good selection of brushes and whatnot that are that are in here. Um but obviously you're not gonna get uh, well I should say obviously, maybe there's a way to do it, but you know, I'm not getting into things like particle brushes and all the other things that you might get into if you're doing like background painting and that sort of stuff. So anyway, I think that's probably enough about Blender two point eight. And back to work, so I guess I've I've recapped what I wanted to recap. From here on out, um, we are into just forging ahead with getting these scenes completed. I'm inserting the dialogue, uh, not the audio, but certainly the subtitles. So I probably will show that. I'll probably do a video of kind of going through, and there's some things I want to change in her attitude in this shot uh, a little bit. And then once we get through this shot, then we're ready to get into the battle. Which is cool because basically from this shot going backwards into the past, this is all stuff that was done a little earlier. And for me, the stuff that was done a little later seems to... Uh, you can kind of see how my skills developed so it's been a little frustrating actually going back into these earlier scenes and and realizing how much of it needs to be sort of tweaked to to bring it up to scratch but of course you could find plenty of fault with stuff I've done more recently as well I'm sure so I don't want to say that it's definitively all all bad or anything some of the ink and paint work 
on the earlier stuff is is quite nice. Some of it was horrible. Um, but before I can get into the battle and start expanding, uh, well, you know, this is this is basically nothing but an animatic, right? With the dialogue sort of baked in. And so what I have to do is start turning every single one of these little sequences into a sub X sheet. Now you might ask yourself, maybe, you'd say, well, how do you do that? What I would do is I would go, uh, I would insert, I would probably insert a level, drag this over, and then turn it into a sub X sheet. Like, okay. It appears that something about my um, control shift down. Let me try that one more time. Control shift down. Yeah, something about my hotkeys in OpenTunes is not working correctly. So, anyway, collapse. Okay, so now I've turned that into a sub X sheet. It's not quite right because actually I needed to include a couple other, other, other levels. But now I can jump down into here and go ahead and expand this out, build it up, add lip sync, add background shadows, yada, yada, yada. And then when I come back out here, all of that is c really contained in, in that one cell, which is which I find to be a, a pretty nice way of working. So, okay, so let's go back to the pre-fight dialogue, and we're not going to save those changes. Um, my workflow is definitely still evolving, but this is going to be the next thing I work on. And so that will be presumably for the next 